the following podcast making a spoiler strongly for graphic violence and nudity. Viewer discretion is advised. <laughs> I'm so sorry. glad. Oh. So glad you found that so amusing. <laughs> it was for me, for me only. Fuck you. Four <laughs> <laughs> guys and a movie. Four guys and a movie. Don't I try and rub at your reviewing movies for the show? Four guys and a movie. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the 4 a.m. podcast. Back in this beautiful new year, of Happy 2021. New year, 2021 is going to be great. Everything's fine. COVID 19 is over. Day 366 all... of 2020. <laughs> all, all peoples of the world are getting along. I, I've had my seven day trial of 2021. Uh, I would like a refund. Cancel you know, my subscription. There's been Return no the insurrections. No oh, pills, no insurrections, nothing bad. Speaking of insurrections, uh, we're back in the realm of Steven Spielberg today. I'm your host, Rob, and joined by my cohorts. Brian. Will. Tony. A crying sculpture made of mashed potatoes. <laughs> I want that to be my tombstone. <laughs> it was made out of mashed potatoes. Yeah. yeah, we are finally doing the long promised close encounters of the third kind. I, I believe this was rolled pre pandemic. Correct. Yeah, it <laughs> rolled like the summertime. I think. Yeah, <laughs> this was rolled pre 1919. Oh. Yeah. No, this, it was, uh, fuck. It was like in March or something. It was March. I think it was March, March. of 2020. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like predate superhero summer. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, Close Encounters. Anybody see this movie before, Joe? I've seen it a bunch right? of times. Yeah. Like, as a kid, because it came on a lot when I was a kid. Yeah. And I always sit down and watch it. And I don't know what the fuck why I did. <laughs> this is like, <laughs> TBS wants you to kill an afternoon. Yeah. Here you go. <laughs> I remember, like, being kind of afraid of it as a kid because of all the scenes where it's just the family screaming at each other. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and yep. I don't think I really ever saw the alien part till I was an adult. <laughs> wow. Which is just as terrifying. You yeah. just thought it was domestic problems, the motion picture. <laughs> yeah, what it is. It kind of is. Because part of it reminds me of batteries not included. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I might might have fixated on that part. And it's like <laughs> it's in the batteries verse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, it might be. We'll get into that. Um, oh, I, I definitely saw this uh, a long time ago. I don't know how young I was when I first saw it. I, I don't know if I fully appreciated it then, but I know I, like my teen years or so, I, I definitely, or early 20s, I saw it and I, uh, I thought it was good. Yeah, I think <sighs> the one time I saw it as an adult, I think I was just like, that was that was fine. And then like. I stopped thinking about it ever because I didn't remember almost anything from this movie yeah, other I, I, than this family screams at each other a bunch. <laughs> I think when I was a teenager, I somehow convinced myself that this was like one of those super classic movies. Mm -hmm. And so I, I bought this. I had, I own this on VHS somewhere and VHS. I don't know. I don't know why, because like we said, TBS exists or did uh, at the time. It did, yeah. Well, yes. a VHS player. Is a VHS or these tapes that have uh, uh, magnetic strips in them for? Never mind. Sorry. Yeah, I've got it. I got a tub of those somewhere. <laughs> those are cookies. Your freaking well. hipster vinyl records. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> yeah, he keeps dude. them as artifacts of the past. Mm. <laughs> all of your Pixies records. So right next um, to all his jelly jars that are now yeah, used for making tea. <laughs> and I had a. Uh, I'd never seen this before. Tony, you got some uh, you got some history on this oh. movie. Oh, all right, we're done with that. Okay, yeah, we're done. <laughs> yes, moving on. Uh, so, of course, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. It is a classic, believe it or not. Um, or you know, whatever. Uh, it came out in 1977. Uh, one uh, directed by Steven Spielberg, and one of the few movies that was both written and directed by, or at least credited as, uh, Steven Spielberg who, of course, did uh, Jaws and E.T., uh, the other directing writing credits being Sugarland Express and AI, so do that what you will. Uh, That's what I point out. Like, those are very different categories, because mm -hmm. this movie fits with Sugarland and AI, 
well, AI, I've seen that one. I haven't seen, seen like, as far as whatever. But Jaws and other ones are awesome-ass movies. Like, they... Well, a- AI was a salvage job of, um, what's his name? Uh, Kubrick? Kubrick, yeah. Uh, like, he, it was Kubrick's ideas that Spielberg turned into a, a script. Technically, he... this was too, or not Kubrick, but uh, there was another guy who wrote the major basically wrote the main story, but he rewrote so much of it that the other guy was like, "Yeah, I can't take credit mm. for that." Um, but uh, originally, it was going to be called "Watch the Skies," and they wanted the main character to be played by Steve McQueen, mm. uh, but he could not cry on cue, so he turned it down. They uh, <laughs> they then looked into other actors, including Al Pacino, Dustin Hoffman, Jack Nicholson, James Caan, and Gene Hackman. Yes, but, I want uh, to see all of those guys get into a screaming match with his wife and children. <laughs> Gene Hackman. I think Gene Hackman. Pacino would have, <laughs> yeah. been, Pacino would have been like, I'll take a flamethrower to those aliens. <laughs> yeah. But uh, of course, our main actor here was working with Spielberg at the time on Jaws. Uh, he actually overheard some of the talk about this movie and got interested in the whole subject matter and uh, really lobbied to get himself on board. Uh, it, and... it, it was like an early relationship, like... Um... Like uh, Samuel L. Jackson and Tarantino, where you just yeah. start ordering yourself into the movie franchises. Like, exactly. yeah, yeah, that sounds good. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow, Steve. <laughs> uh, of course, we got John Williams, who composed the great score for this movie, including the iconic five-note structure, uh, which apparently took a lot of work to do. I, I, I didn't even list the whole fucking story behind that, but th- there was a there was a lot. Because um, <laughs> John Williams was like. <laughs> and Steven's like, no, just five notes, dude. Just five. Well, no, that's like, you're not far off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's exactly it. Beer. Uh, no, he wrote a piece, Coffee. but it was deemed too long, so they had like uh musicians and stuff come in and like discuss the era uh, not just musicians but mathematicians as well and discuss how many five note structures that could be made and it was like over a hundred so they were like all right we got to pare this down and it, was, it just became a thing um, so who made the decision that the aliens would choose as their instrument to broadcast the five notes from be a tuba <laughs> I, i'm not sure i'm guessing john williams i don't it's know not a tuba uh, this is also what, what, one of what is it, Rob? It's a uh, Chica phone. Oh, my mistake. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this is also one of the first movies to ever get a special editions director's cut uh, released. Huh. So you can thank and or blame Steven Spielberg for that being a trend. Mm, I think that's the VHS I have. <laughs> this movie is apparently played every night at uh, Devil's Tower KOA campground. Gross. <laughs> They probably have a, it's probably KOA, a yeah, KOA campground, yes. Uh, I guess during the iconic mashed potato scene, when you can hear the little girl say, there's a dead fly in the potatoes, that was not part of the script. <laughs> um, I guess there was just a dead fly in her mashed potatoes, <laughs> and it made the cast and crew laugh, so they thought that was cute and left it in. Uh, so there was a lot of... <laughs> it was cute. <laughs> well, that maybe not cute. <laughs> Did not prevent uh, Dreyfus from eating it either. No, yeah, not at all. The mom was like, eat it anyway. Uh, yes. Apparently, there 70. was a lot of work put into trying to make the aliens for the end of this movie. We'll get and, there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. well, <laughs> say what you will about the end product and we will get there. But at one point, they were going to have, I, I believe they were just going to put mimes in it and have them move, uh, like, uh, have the actors move extra slow and then speed it up so it looked like the, the people were moving at normal speed and they were moving super fast. Well, Lucas uh, wanted to use that in the cantina instead. Yeah. <laughs> and then at another point, they were going to try uh, a different tactic to make these aliens look weird and oddly shaped and move funny and such. So they decided to put a gray spandex suit on an orangutan and then put them in uh, nice. some skates. Yes. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> apparently... During uh, the test of that, the orangutan just immediately took off the skates and walked over to its master. So that didn't work out very well. They're like, yeah, this is not in my contract. That was when the orangutan, that was the one time the orangutan had too much class for what was going yeah. on there. And yeah. he was I'm like, thes- so I'm a thespian. This is my me. Take me home. I have my dignity, sir. Yeah. 
And I'll yeah, be uh, in my trailer eating my own shit. Also, change my diaper. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, uh, uh, want to guess how much money this movie cost to make? Probably a lot for the seventies. Let's say twenty mm-hmm. million. Yeah, I'm gonna say I'm feeling ten, I'll which in the seventies is million. a lot of money. What was that, 20, Brian? Uh, Twenty-five million. Uh, I'll go thirty. <laughs> Uh, it, actually, Rob hit it right on the head with 20. Well, I guess how much it made? A bajillion dollars. Um, 50 million. 75 million dollars. 100. Uh, was, again, uh, this could be, you know, I, I don't know if this is including re-releases or whatnot, but uh, it was 306 million dollars. Good lord. That has yeah. to be with all, 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 the, uh, all the re-releases yeah. and everything. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it plays every night at Devil's Tower. <laughs> yeah. so. yeah. I mean, that's... All those tickets. That's close to a billion in like modern day money. Yeah, that's 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 like there'll be a sequel sequel money and there yeah. wasn't or a real one of this movie. <laughs> well, yet. Well, that you know, but that well, one you also got to remember this was back in a time when we were you know some people were smart enough to yeah. say no. Also, a lot of other movies have borrowed from like the artistic structure of the aliens in this movie. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, I know the alien at the end of this movie for is For better e. or for worse. Well, is is E.T.'s uh, designer, whatever. That, that's that's what the idea came from. Hmm. Hmm. Well, let's just jump on in, eh? Or do, well, do we have to read the cast list still? Let's talk about the people we got in this movie. Uh, well, Richard Dreyfus playing Roy. Uh, Francois Truffant as Claude. Uh, Terry Gar as Ronnie Neary and Melinda Dillon as Jillian. And um, I didn't even notice him, but Lance Henriksen has a little cameo as Robert. Lance Henriksen? Mm hmm. Will, uh, Will Carl Carl Weathers? I, I, I missed it. I know he's in the cast list, but I missed w- w- where he was. Yeah. Well, he was, Eagle uh, Eyes Oxford here. Mm-hmm. When Richard Dreyfus shows up in Wyoming, Carl Weathers is just like one of the military officers being like, Who are you looking for? Oh, if you're looting, we're going to shoot you. Okay. <laughs> nice. And then went on some spiel about Burger King. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Start making himself a stew. Cast list. Done. Yep. Uh, we we suddenly break into the strangest Mandalorian cold open. Yeah, just a fucking <laughs> sandstorm in the desert. Um, And then a whole team of people show up and a lot of French is said yeah. and a lot of Spanish is said and yeah. not a lot of subtitles are there. No. So like one thing I don't get with this. So you, we get a we get a, a present day thing put on the screen. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like for no fucking reason. Yeah. Why? Like, yeah. You would specify if it wasn't the present day. Well, yeah. because I mean, yeah, well. They call it the airplanes. At, well, yeah, the airplanes, you look at the truck that pulls up, looks kind of older. And plus, like, you're, you're watching this scene, and all you're thinking is, is this Indiana Jones? Am I watching Indiana yeah. Jones right now? Yeah. Yeah, is that uh, John Reese davies <laughs> Well, this like, predates any of the Indiana Jones movies, which is interesting to think about. But, like, 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 so, in this, the scene, basically, they pull up, and they, and they, they find some, some aircraft that have been missing for 30-odd years, whatever, in uh, pristine condition, right? Grumman Avengers. Mm-hmm. All they had to say was, these have been missing for 30-something years, and they look brand new. Which they mm-hmm. say in the movie. Yep. Right. <laughs> so yes. Say present day to set that up. Anyway, I'm just nitpicking. Whatever. That's cool fair. plane. That was the plane flown in World War II by former President George uh, Bush, the older of the Bushes. The dead one. The dead one. Um, they find some old dude. He's all like burnt up, and uh, he's muttering him to himself and talking Anybody, about. Uh... Hmm? So, sorry, did anybody get weird Godzilla vibes from this scene? Now that you're saying that I am. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, uh, you know, just switch that with the, what's his name? Jean Reno. Jean Reno, and just <laughs> have, hold the lighter over some poor Japanese man's face. Of course you go. So, <laughs> yeah, he basically said the sun showed up at night and sang to him, burnt him, and whatever, <laughs> fucked off. And then cut from there to, like, some dude in a control tower in some airfield somewhere listening to a pilot talk about playing a game of chicken with a UFO. Mm-hmm. And then that just kind of concludes. It's a fairly suspenseful scene. I'll say that like for, for 1977, it's fairly suspenseful. We, we're, we're setting the tone and yeah, I definitely yeah. for a seventies movie. That is a yeah. lot. So, you know, it was, um, McCaw, there were, there were a lot of bros huddled around one radar screen, touching each other. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then, 
we cut to Muncie, Indiana, and there's some boy sleeping, and he's awakened by a creepy fucking symbol monkey, just like. Yeah, as yeah. soon as that happened, I was like, is this poltergeist? No, yeah, like, Mer- Merlin showed up, and he was like, you're welcome. I, I was <laughs> wondering if you were going to make the Merlin joke, Rob. <laughs> yeah. So, like, that monkey is creepy as fuck, but what scared me yeah. more was this little fucking kid. Creep oh, me yeah. the fuck out. He's yeah. possessed by the not, the not the zombie Frankenstein thing that drops its pants for some reason? Did you catch <laughs> the that? Kid was, the kid was the scariest thing to me in, in the scene. Yeah. <laughs> in the scene. Um, so, yeah, this kid's just walking through the house like, no problem. All my toys are activated. Yeah. Up until, right, even right now. All, all that not that I really was... have any toys in my room anymore, but if all my toys activated at night, I would still freak the fuck out. <laughs> Rob would be dead. Yeah, yeah. I'd be dead. Mm. Oh, no, like these are all my minions. They're they're loyal. This kid, what? like he's walking around the house. The refrigerator doors open. How Alien mad would you up. be if you saw all your fucking food on the fucking oh, ground? Aliens had a snack attack. What, as a you, child, I was like, or as man, child? I really want a coke right now. Just like <laughs> all that it, it, hurt, coke. it hurt my heart to see all that food wasted. Yeah. Like it just, it just hurt. <laughs> but that's like chat foul on these aliens because yeah. um, there's a difference between doing some research. And just treating the refrigerator with no goddamn respect. Are you None sure they research? Maybe they were just being dicks. Like, they yeah. just opened the refrigerator door, started pushing stuff out, like, meh, yeah. meh. It always, I always found it funny when aliens, it's like, you would think they would take specimens and, like, you know, slowly extricate oh, everything like it was artifacts and whatnot. No, the alien was just like, fuck your fridge. Blah, 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 blah. Well, <laughs> the problem is they got, they got into the core's banquet first. Yeah. And then it was all over. <laughs> like, we, I don't need your milk. Want to know how they actually did some of this? What's that? Uh, to get that kid's what, reaction. Throw food on the floor? <laughs> no. To get no, the I, kid's I, I, reaction for this. I know how that happened. Yeah. You, you want to say it? <laughs> Well, I think it's part of the part of the reason why the kid is so creepy, because the kid just can't act at all. Yeah, wait, wait, so, he's a kid. Well, he's, he's like, like four. four. Well, yeah, he's like a baby. Oh well, yeah, you know. But no, they're creepy as little, little kids that can act now. But like, yeah. so they had to use Carol toys Man. and people in costume to get him to react to things oh. in the house, because otherwise he's wouldn't. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, more specifically, at in this scene when he comes around and the the food is on the floor, when he walks in, he is greeted by a man in a clown costume. Which oh. creeped him out, and oh, then wow. uh, like a, a sheet dropped, and the guy was there, and then another sheet dropped, and it was a dude in a monkey costume, and that's oh, when no. he gets really freaked out. And then the guy in the monkey costume takes the mask off, and it's the makeup designer who he knows, and that's why he gets all excited. Mm. And then I, I believe wow. he, when he runs to the window, Steven Spielberg, uh, like unwrapped a present and held up a toy or something. That's why he goes toys. Mm-hmm. Like a... <laughs> so so baby Barry over here basically just gets lured out into the woods and goes walking off and his mom wakes up and goes uh, running after him his he's... mom is the mom from a uh, Christmas story he's yeah. Barry the bog boy now yep <laughs> yeah. and Surprise, then we cut uh, Jeffrey Jones wasn't in this yeah. movie <laughs> well he was in the bog yeah then we <laughs> cut to uh, the Richard Dreyfus. Just yeah. Richard Dreyfus is just living the American dream here in this house full of crap. Uh, with like this one shitty kid, Toby is just smashing a oh doll to pieces. Toby the doll destroyer on his baby bin, and they're arguing about like wacky golf and seeing Pinocchio. Um, this whole scene is like F is it is it, F is F is for, for family. Like it's that whole seventies. Family. He's trying to teach his like, son fractions by by destroying his his his, his trains. Like yep. just, <laughs> the, the wife's up. like, "Hey, you put your stuff on my table. You could put your stuff on your table." And everyone's like, they're not yelling, but they're definitely speaking in an unpleasant tone. You could just mm. the tension and, is just and they're they're oh, all yeah. pretending that they are a functional family, but just only just yeah but it's all like (laughs) it's all accented with that kid just smashing that doll against the side of the crib and you're just like i want to reach into the tv and kill every last one of these people yeah you know who i don't want to see any more of this whole fucking family yeah Yeah, just immediately right out the gate i'm like i'm done also to (laughs) clarify for those listening that might not have seen this this is not a little kid that's just in a crib this is a crib for like a younger sister 
who mm-hmm. he is way too big for, and he just climbed in there and destroys one of her toys. That's mm-hmm. what we're dealing with. Yeah. Over over the course of like five long minutes, it's not even like he just hit it a few times and it broke. Like this, like it took the kid, like like they they told a, a an actual kid to destroy an actual doll, and it like took that long for him to do. Um. So power cuts out. Yeah, Richard Dreyfuss's character here, Roy, he um he's got to go out and like he does something with a power company. Um, he's, a, I think another, he's a line worker. Another so. follow on this movie. Don't put more than a feeling in there and then take it away that fast. That's <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> Fucking cuts the Boston out. And um, he's driving on the road trying to find cornbread on a map. Yeah, what? Is that a road. place? It, it was a it was a shitty joke. He was trying to call the guy a turkey, and you caught. It was just a shitty joke. It well, was, no, was he was looking for cornbread before the guy shows up. And I think they like, said it was like Cornbread Avenue or Cornbread yeah. Street. This guy drives by. He's like, "You're in the Is middle that... of the road, Jack Jackass." And I don't even know what his comeback was, other than calling him a turkey. Yeah. <laughs> But in the previous scene when he's at the like power plant, did y'all hear him say that like the power out is out at Crystal Lake a bunch of times? Oh yeah, yep. And I was yeah. like, man, this is like a backdoor Jason. Yeah. <laughs> now, Jason movie. Will, you grew up on Cornbread Avenue. Do you, can you give us like a layout of the area? That's just a just a big old dump. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Can't argue with that. Wheat like, Tea Avenue intersects there. One of my uncles used to live on a roast meat hill. Not that <laughs> exciting. Wow, okay. All right. So um, he's at like a railroad intersection trying to figure out what's going on. And these aliens show up and they shake his sign and fuck up some mailboxes and just smash the shit out of his... Well, not smash the shit out of his truck, but just like use their alien powers to like fuck with everything in his truck at once <laughs> they're just they're just like shitty teens yeah. little drogies <laughs> just yeah lying around yeah like so their their idea of research is they're like we have some sort of telekinetic beam that could push every button in his truck at once yeah let's just annoy him just do it yeah fine and then he sticks his face out a window and gets like half his face burned for his efforts um and then uh yeah you see a uh, ufo um go flying by and then uh, Roy kind of, like, he's sitting there for a second, and you're like, when's the jump scare coming? When's the jump scare coming? And I like that he jump scares himself with his own flashlight, <laughs> then goes tearing ass down the road to try to, like, chase this UFO down. And he almost runs over stupid baby Barry, who's standing in the road. Oh, he's left the bog and, and yep. entered freaking baby bog boy deliverance all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what is up with these neighbors in the back of their pickup? Just, just staring. Just staring. Just staring. And the one dude winks at him. Yep. <laughs> and I mean, and it's storyboarded. You could tell where it's just like, this person stares at Roy. Now this person stares at Roy. This person stares at this person. And you're just like, okay, got it. There's people here. I mean, it's and then, Spielberg, so it's just yeah. going to get staring. And then these freaking three UFOs go flying by. Well, three, like, good-sized UFOs that you could see, like, different lights and stuff on them. One of which is continuously drunk this whole movie because it's constantly <laughs> falling end over end on itself, and it's always taken up the rear. That's the fun one. That's the fun yeah. one, yeah. That's, that's the party like, ship. They look yeah. like weird light-up toys you'd get in, like, an old-timey general store. Or just a Dollar General. Place. But yeah. <laughs> for 1977, they're pretty whimsical. Then the it's fourth sure. UFO is just a little red dot. Don't know why. Just a just a red dot flying by. It's the baby one. Yeah. It's the battery's and then not included. It's like a friggin' like Smokey and the Bandit police chases the UFOs are tearing after them. <laughs> it's just like, okay, let's see where this goes. And one of these cops, are, like he's looking at the UFO and doesn't notice and just fucking like like a seventies, you know, chase movie just drives his car right off the cliff. And everyone, everyone stops and looks at the UFOs. No, everyone's like, fuck him. <laughs> he <laughs> to himself. He's so like, he's he right? like... <laughs> Yeah, there's no fallout from that. You're just like, all right, whatever. Um, so uh, Roy comes home. Half his face is burnt. He wakes his wife up, gets all the kids and, um, you know, like takes them out to the spot where they saw the UFO, like he's going to see it again. His wife uh, manages to kind of get him home with some makeouts 
Uh, and then, like, you're like, okay, sure. And we immediately cut to the UN driving through the deserts in Mongolia. And they find, after a bit of driving around, this big old Russian cargo ship just sitting in the Mongolian desert. Um, interestingly enough, it's not in Mongolia, but there is an area in the world, there's a sea that dried up, and there are docks and ships that are just sitting in a desert now. Hmm. And it does, it looks like that. It is pretty cool. It's somewhere in one of the former Soviet satellite states. Um, so that happens, and then uh, we are like, okay, you know, some interesting alien stuff's happening. You know what I want to see now? Richard Dreyfus get paddled in the ass by one of his kids. Yeah, no, yeah. that's good. That's <laughs> exactly how we transition to this next scene. Like, I, all these scenes, all these family scenes, mm -hmm. I get why they're in there, but they're all just too long. Yeah. Like, just, ugh. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing, I understand what he's conveying. Yeah, yeah I get it's that. that like, you got, like, a guy, you know, a guy trying to hold on to his sanity and his family's reaction to it. I get it, but it's like no one wants that. We, I want to go see what's going on in Mongolia. I want to, yeah, you know, some more of these aliens in <laughs> India. You know, yeah, you I want to see. I want to beat the people that on that story. team that yeah. are tracking the aliens down, and I want to hear a little bit about the science they're using to do it. Not, nah, I got Richard Dreyfus's ass getting paddled by one of his kids, and then just a, it's not a bad scene, but it's not the scene I want of just him and his wife having this kind of tension-filled discussion about. Um, you know, looking for UFOs and what Roy saw and all that. And his wife doesn't really believe him. And Roy's boss fucking just calls up his wife and is like, yeah, he's fired. Don't, I don't even want to talk to him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and why was he fired? Yeah. I, I don't know about in the seventies, but like, I'm pretty sure you just get unemployment for that. Like there's no, like, I don't, uh, I don't know that. So they were calling him into work the night that he went, the night before, yeah, they're calling him like, to do go, shit. He did just go missing. That um, <laughs> yeah, and he just didn't show up. So they were like, yeah. "Fuck you!" But like, I think they called him in because he works for the power company. They called him in because the like, power was going out. Because the, the alien power came, came back on. Yeah, yeah it came back on. So like, power all came back on. And yeah, like, did anybody? Did anybody from there call to make sure like he was like, okay? Or <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh. I I'm sorry, I, I wasn't there when someone turned off power to the entire county and then turned it back on at a whim. Yeah. Sorry, I couldn't also, help that. Also, I have third degree burns on my face <laughs> and <laughs> chest and arms and legs. Yeah. It's I, like I um... will say uh, for the uh, for the whole rest of the movie, part of the thing is uh, much like with uh, Temple of Doom, where it kind of had that weird thing of you know how he was feeling with relationships. And that's why we had a really nagging wife, or, or not yeah. wife character, but, you know. Uh, this was also Spielberg being really afraid of, uh, like, getting married and becoming a father. That's why a lot of this movie focuses on the craziness of his home life and having uh -huh. to try and deal with that. Not for nothing, but isn't the lunatic crazy person in Temple of Doom uh, yes, Spielberg's wife? I, no, I get yeah. it. <laughs> well, ex-wife now, but yeah. yeah there you go. So, so yeah, put me in your movie. <laughs> my uh, my, I think my favorite part of this scene was uh, the kids are acting up, and, and Terry Gars is just like, "Go outside and eat hot dogs." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, that's that's seventies slash eighties parents. That's why I'm fat." That's all you needed back then. That was that solved the problem. Yeah, don't bother were, me. Go the outside world was and eat. so much less complicated. It was just like, <laughs> let me go outside, give me a hot dog, yeah. and we're good. We're not making hot dogs. One of the neighbors is probably making yeah. hot dogs. Just so, go get food. Someone outside now. will give you a hot dog. <laughs> yeah. Just, just go walk around you. until hey, you find one. Now all our hot dogs are made in China. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's face it. And now the, you can't you the, can't take a hot dog from anyone outside your house. All right. Yeah, no, you the know the best there. way, or er, most of the people that are part, you know, official members of Fat Chat are that way because someone said, "I'm tired of your talking. Put a hot dog in that mouth." <laughs> Wow. The last but time it, I took a hot dog from it, a stranger, it turned out it was Jeffrey Jones. It used to be <laughs> one hot dog, but a hot dog wouldn't do it, so I so a hot dog became more and more. Or well, yeah, hot Mr. dog, Twinkie, goes. pizza, whatever yeah. you had. <laughs> anyway, um, so now we cut to India, and there's this whole like group of people chanting, and like the tones. The five tones in this movie that like that have been running through the whole thing, they've been subtle up to this point. And I don't know if you've ever hear all five of them at once up to this point, but so. 
um, now, like, there's this whole mass of them chanting, mass of people chanting it at you. And, you know, it's a cool scene. I like it. Uh, but then we cut to Roy firing up his trusty 110-millimeter uh, camera, and uh, he's going to go out and look for some UFOs. And, uh, should we call it? Then uh, he, he meets up with, uh, with that chick, Jillian, who was chasing Barry last night. Um, and she's burned all over her body. Barry, of course, is not burned. Because, you know, you can't show a four-year-old being burned, even though he would fucking be burned by it like everyone else. Um, But maybe there's a theory about that. I don't know. We'll see. They all stop and just play with mud on the side of the road. Just make like a little poopy castle. (laughs) I didn't see a father. Did you maybe Barry is made of midichlorians? Anybody think about that? (laughs) Possible. That's why it's so creepy. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Or uh, so, one of those little people aliens. <laughs> well, we'll talk about that, too. House. So, um, now, like, you think more UFOs are coming, and you're like, okay, it's going to be helicopters. Now, uh, granted, in the 70s, it probably was not abundantly clear that it was going to be helicopters. But the scene, it takes, like, two minutes for these lights to reveal that it's just helicopters. Mm. And you're, like, you're sitting there waiting forever. And you're like, okay, yep, helicopters. Um... And then we cut to, I think the only scene in this film, well, no, the, the family fight made me mad, but this is probably the only other scene in the film that outright made me mad, is the obligatory scene where, um, <laughs> the, the obligatory scene where um, the scientists, like, decode something and get a series of numbers and talk about the series of numbers and throw yeah. out all kinds of wild theories about what those numbers can be, uh, even though... When you get a series of numbers, the first thing you check is if it's longitude and lat- latitude. Like, what else would you think of first? Like, it, what 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 what's weird to me is that like like they're astronomers and shit. Like they use radio telescopes, which function yeah. off of coordinates. Like, yep. like, like they, it should have been immediately. Right. Oh, these are coordinates. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, and they had yeah. to go get a globe. Like, they don't have like a regular map. Yeah, I'm not going to say anytime someone gets numbers, your first thought is longitude or latitude, but, like, if they are... Those scientists should... <laughs> well, yes, that probably, but also, like, if they fit that structure, yeah, that definitely should yeah. be your, you know, your go-to. Yep. But yeah, but if you're getting two sets of six numbers, yeah. like, that should be your first guess. Like, unless yeah. it's... If it's a string of 12 numbers, maybe not, but, like, two sets of six, that's... That's what it is. Like, I don't know, or what it would be most reasonable to assume it is. So, you know, you get a cool scene, though, where they, like, roll a big-ass globe, uh, you know, into their lab. And then uh, we cut back to Baby Barry. He's playing um, the tone of, you know, the five notes on his little toy xylophone. Shout out to that little toy xylophone. I had one of those hours of fun. It's a classic. Yeah, I think most people had that toy, and that that, that xylophone was the shit. Mm. Uh, I think cause every parent that had it probably passed it on to the next yeah. friend friend they had with kids to get it out of their yeah. house. And that was one of those toys that that thing would last forever. Like, you might break the wheels off of it, but you're not breaking the xylophone part. Yeah. And, and um, it, Also, I apologize. I think this is the part where the toys were held outside the window, mm-hmm. not before, but... Yeah, anyway. All right, so um, Jillian's sketching uh, the Devil's Tower. At this point, we don't know it's the Devil's Tower, but, you know, now because of this movie's effect on our culture, we all know about the Devil's Tower. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And um, Santa Claus comes in. This is where yeah. I learned what, what, a, what a butte was because mm-hmm. of this movie. Oh, yeah, some geography. And you were like, wait, that's not a butt? Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, like some lights come on outside. Barry just goes and like opens up the door, and fucking yells Zool at him, and uh, <laughs> you know, his mom closes it. And aliens are trying to get in through every way in the house. And mind you, they have crazy telekinetic abilities. They have all this stuff, but they're thwarted by like they're coming down the chimney. Close the chimney flue. Like they're coming in through the air vent. Put a rug over it. Like, yeah, like... And... yeah I do like you know. <laughs> I can activate your vacuum cleaner, but I can't move a rug. <laughs> <laughs> and then well, she... I, I can I can unscrew the screws from from your from your vent cover, but I can't undo undo a flue or open the door. Like yeah, yeah. or a lock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't break or, the window. <laughs> or <laughs> or funny, that funny thing. There's a fucking doggy door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, she doesn't think to barricade that. Granted, she's panicking, but like 
that would be like the meet the first thing I would think of of like, oh crap, that's the biggest security liability in my house. I, I will say though, still more effective than the ones in the signs. Yeah, no, they wouldn't have fit through the doggy door. Well, Those they also the wouldn't. Worst damn aliens. They would have just stopped at that. They were like, yeah. oh, the door's locked. Fuck. Like I know I've seen that movie, but like it didn't leave a mark on me at all. Like I don't remember. I remember being like disappointed. Like that's all I have from that movie. The, yep, mm-hmm. that's all anyone has. <laughs> so don't worry about Disappointment. it. Disappointment. Yep. Yeah. God killed his wife just so he could be reminded at a crucial time to tell his brother to hit the alien with a baseball bat. <laughs> yep, pretty much. I mean, that's real. That's like that's not. I'm not making that up. Yeah. Like, also, wow. also, the whole point is that uh, Earth is being taken over by aliens, where their only weakness is being stopped by wooden objects, and they're allergic to water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why would they come to Earth? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> With no no HEV suit, nothing. Yeah. A- anyway, so all right. Um. Ev- yeah. Everything in the house goes nuts. They kidnap Baby Barry through the doggo door. And we cut to a conference with the the Air Force where all the townspeople are like, look, yo, we saw UFOs. They were like, like right there. And the Air Force is like, nah, you think you saw that. But, uh, you know, that that was something else. Yeah. And uh, like, like it was going good until the old kook was like, I saw Bigfoot last month. And it was yeah, like, it just oh, immediately oh. changes the subject. <laughs> yeah. well, and There's that's always the problem that whenever you you try to get like a town together to like pool its you know, collective resources to be like, hey, guys, we could solve this one issue if we all just do this one thing. And so the guy's like, well, uh, I, you know, don't I want to talk about something else and totally derail the conversation. <laughs> yeah. Um, So, like, that scene happens and it's out, like getting a law pass. Sorry. <laughs> it's just. Yeah. It's like getting a law pass. It's like you somebody yeah. has a really good idea and then like five other things get tacked onto it that are horrible. So it just doesn't happen. Yeah. So, like, this law will help literally everyone. And then, like, yeah, another, like, senator representative will just be like, okay, well, um, now let me put this deeply unpopular thing on it so that you'll have to pass that, too. Um, But anyway, so now uh, during the conference, Roy's getting frustrated because no one's really taking this seriously anymore after Bigfoot guy. (laughs) It made a noise that I would not like to hear again in my life. Um, and Roy gets stressed out and draws like the devil's tower and breaks the pencil. Cause he's, it's almost like he's fighting against drawing it, mm-hmm. but he does it anyway. Mm. And, um, then we go from there to, uh, the, the government team that's led by like this French guy and the cartographer trans, uh, not, tra- uh, translator. And they're like, uh, okay, we got to go to Wyoming. That's where the coordinates are leading us. How are we going to evacuate like 300 miles around the Devil's Tower? And I like that the first idea is like, let's do a pandemic. That'll scare everyone. And they're even back then, they're just like, nah, nah no. There's always that wacko that's like, <laughs> I don't, I'm immune. I don't believe it. <laughs> and you're like, it's my nah. God given right to stay here and die yeah. from a pandemic. 43 <laughs> years later. Still correct. I'll just inject some ammonia into my blood. Let the sun burn. Yeah. So the government. That's why Roy's immune. Right. Yes. <laughs> so the government fires up their piggly wiggly trucks <laughs> and starts heading <laughs> off to uh, <laughs> Wyoming. Um, and then, what should we call it? Uh, we cut to the dinner, the family dinner scene where <sighs> uh, Roy and his family are all sitting at the table, and this is well done. But again, this is like, I don't, I don't want this in this movie. <laughs> well, part of it's well done, I guess. So, like, first off, Roy's got big ambitions. He goes ham on those mashed potatoes. He's like, he, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's, that's about as much mashed potatoes as I would eat. But he's like, he's sitting there and he's just shoveling it on and shoveling it on. <laughs> and he starts playing with his food and he's making a little, he's making a little tower. And everyone starts to cry. It's just a slow chain <laughs> Of every single person at the table, his little, to cry. his little Liv Tyler looking son, <laughs> just just tears are pouring down his face, and I'm like, I mean, granted that that is how my family looks when I pile mashed potatoes on my plate uh-huh. at Thanksgiving, <laughs> but it's it's just not the same. Like they've they've had years of experience with me doing that. I'd like, like to think, mommy, though, I want some mashed potatoes too. No, let, let <laughs> Rob. 
Yeah. Let Rob can do his thing. Just, just like keep your thing. hands clear until he's done. <laughs> the little kid is crying because he had high hopes for those mashed potatoes. Yeah. And fucking Roy took, like, all of them. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> they look like good mashed potatoes. They got some yeah. nice, nice uh, mush factor to them. Mm-hmm. I mean, Will, you were, you know, if if I can, uh, if I can visit you while you're uh, vacationing in Cheddar Bay, you can you can come visit me on Mashed Potato Mountain. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, side story for my on the day of my or my birthday, I ordered takeout from Red Lobster mm-hmm. and got like a twelve pack of the Cheddar Bay Cheddar biscuits. biscuits. And nice. I was just like, I want a timeshare on Cheddar Bay wherever it is. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone, yeah, everyone cries. And Roy's just like, Dad's going crazy. Um, are there any fat chat fowls that need to be handed out here? Did he um, eat the mashed potatoes? Mashed, yeah, I'm yeah. thinking he didn't eat them. No, he didn't. Yeah, so that's foul. Yeah, don't. Well, we don't see him eat them. He might have. Uh, if he did, he was crying while he ate them. <laughs> well, yeah. That's a technical foul. Yeah. I, well, if that's a fat chat foul, then I'm accused of a lot of that. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, oh, we've all been there yeah he, i can't give him a foul for that <laughs> but yeah if he didn't that's a foul right there like you oh, gotta yeah. eat your mashed potato you there's, don't there's, don't take not. all the mashed potatoes on the table and then not eat them you can cry into them but you just have yeah. to eat them yeah you finish what you start yeah. regardless of the consequences you finish what you start <laughs> <laughs> you might be eating them till you start crying too but yeah Gotta of go. course, this segues into a good old-fashioned screaming match. Yep. <laughs> oh, my God. So, now, uh, I don't know what's worse here. So, um, poor poor Ronnie wakes up to her husband, fully clothed, crying in the bathtub, and refusing to let her in. Um, and then she has to, like, get out. Wait, like, was he crying? I thought he was asleep. I thought he was just asleep no, in there, was, and that's why I was He was crying in there. He was hiding I, the tears in a deluge of water. Yeah. <laughs> I took it as he cried himself to sleep in the shower. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. And then she woke him up. Because he's a never nude. And she's, yeah. I can't say she takes this well. No. And then the fucking, she, she's just like, Roy, this is all your fault. You're awful. And then the freaking, the kid runs in and he's just like cry baby and he slammed the door he's like cry baby cry he's a little bitch that was crying over the mashed yeah. potatoes You're like no you cried at the, at the table don't bring that shit over here you can't have that kid <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's angry at his own feelings come on now i mean oh. it's just there's not even one i'll give you something to cry about was uttered yeah but it's, it's like just watching <laughs> yeah. it's it's watching some episodes of always sunny it was where it's just yeah. like I'm just physically exhausted watching these people scream at each other, yeah. and I just like I, I wanted it to stop. That's yeah, fair. at this like at this point, other kids are now in the room just screaming. Why are we screaming? <laughs> yeah, I don't, even know. Scream. I don't even know. Loud noises. <laughs> it could be neighbor kids just coming in, just yelling. It's I'm like, dude, it's just mashed potatoes, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Everybody just chill out. And yeah, so Ronnie ends up sleeping on the floor in the kids' room. And I also uh, like somewhere around here, he gets a great clue yep. of because uh, he removes the top of the tower he made out of clay. Yeah, well, and it just it bugged the shit out of me because as someone who worked with clay, it never comes off that clay. Never. <laughs> yeah, fuck this guy. So the one last thing, all Roy wanted in that scene was a hug, uh-huh. For, like legit. Well, that's what he that's said. Yeah, that's he what he said he wanted, but yeah, yeah, and like. Nope. Instead, he got every member of his family screaming. So, yeah, he wakes up and he's like, okay, no more of this. I'm throwing everything out. All the alien stuff's going to go. Wait, let's take a quick break. Will, what are you yeah. watching over there? Where? <laughs> you got all this, this light show going on in the background. Well, all we see is just your curly hair yeah. and, uh, yeah, a crazy light show. Uh... So don't try to act like you're not watching <laughs> something. It's a basketball Because like, you're in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> So yeah, at this point, like he's he's doing his little clay sculpture, or whatever, and now yep. we're getting whimsy music. Like we just had this <laughs> blowout fight with his family, yeah. and all of a sudden it transfers to Harry Potter going a freaking <laughs> Diagon Alley. And, yeah, like what Tony said when he pulled the top of this sculpture off. I never thought that I would see a whimsical scene of a family collapse. Right, yeah. and I'm like, you don't so, you don't get whimsy music now. Yeah. And it's not not even like this isn't a comedy, but they're like, let's let's do the whimsy while his family literally implodes. Whimsy so, it up. and I don't get the because okay, 
he's compelled to make the sculpture. I got, I got you there. We're good. Right. Why is he compelled to throw every ingredient of the sculpture through that one tiny window, including the wheelbarrow full of dirt, which he could have just brought in the damn house? And he's himself fully, at the end of it. He's fully yeah. Snapped. yeah right. He's fully he's, snapped at this point. He's like, no more doors. Yeah. Fuck doors. Yeah. This also, and, I, I felt so bad for him because that uh, the other woman just like, she just drew it a bunch. He's got to <laughs> make it out of shit and destroy his house <laughs> well, in the process. This turn well, this in, in all was helpful for, later. For, for, for her, all she had was her and her son. They took yeah. her son, so she was by herself. So we, we don't see her her breakdown in, into insanity. We don't know. <laughs> <That's true>. Sure, <laughs> she's got she one made of her own crap. Too, like. <laughs> oh, so you're saying so you're saying she drew it a bunch, but there's like bodies in her yeah. basement. We don't get to find. We don't know. We don't know. Yeah, yeah. There's Fair a enough. Bunch of dead squirrels in the shape of that mountain in her, in her living room. <laughs> Fair enough. So, um, he just starts going around the neighborhood, just taking things. And all throwing them through this one tiny window in his kitchen. Yeah. And the whole neighborhood watches. And like, and his, his wife doesn't even, she doesn't even change. She's just like, I got to go. I'm taking the kids and I'm leaving. Yep. And um, like, they're all still in their pajamas. And then Roy's like, where are you going? You're not, you know, you're still, you in, could say. Yeah, you're still in your nightgown. What are you crazy? And she's like, <laughs> why would you say that to me? Someone drives, here is. <laughs> yeah. Drives off running over a perfectly good big wheel, which is basically how every big wheel dies, right. uh, as far as I know. And then um, throwing Roy off the hood of the car. And Roy's like, okay, fine. I'll just throw myself through this window. <laughs> and then, and like, at this point, I noticed it's when he has his robe on over his like je- jeans. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that's when you know someone's lost it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're on vacation. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. Look at so, Joe right so, now. So, or in a <laughs> pandemic. No, I'm I'm in my pajamas. Oh, okay. Jeans but anyway, around this point. Jeans are hard pants. You only wear a robe with soft pants. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Let's, right. let's not let's not bring up the words hard pants. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was around this point in the movie where I realized that this movie is two separate movies <laughs> happening at once. That there's still an hour left. <laughs> well, yeah, because 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 by now one one movie should be about done by now, but instead yeah. there's two movies running at the same time. Mm-hmm. And one movie, kind of on today's backdrop, is like uh, someone who refuses to believe, like someone who's, who says something so crazy, who just wants to be believed, and has no one around him, 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 him believes him, um, who's being compelled to, 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 to do dumb shit. And I, I felt for like some of these people, wackadoo people, you know, that are, are doing shit right now. And it's like, I kind of felt for them for a hot minute. But then I'm like, <laughs> no, nah, because from the wife's perspective, she's justified in taking the kids and fucking leaving because he's being yeah. reckless and and, and, yeah. And, yeah. and and unsafe in, in his trying to sort through this shit that he, he believes he knows. Yeah. And that's one movie happening. The other movie is the one that I want to see is with the aliens trying to find out more about the aliens yeah. and all kind of shit. Yeah. That's the one I want to watch. Yeah. <laughs> You don't get that till you know the next half hour. Or so yeah. it's you know uh, whether or not that pays off is to be, yeah, to be discussed. But so, but I, and the thing is, like he's not even he doesn't even just sit down and like explain calmly to his wife what's happening. Like as far as I can tell, he it's, can. It's just yelling all the time. Hmm. It's just yelling. I'm gonna convey my opinion by yelling it at you louder than you can yell yours at me. Alright, so. Can, can I just say, though, the winner of the that is how you deal with that award for this movie, though, is the garbage man that's about to take his trash. Yeah. <laughs> Roy just runs up, snatches that shit out of his hand. They have a like a two second tug of war between the before the garbage man's just like, why am I fighting this man for his trash? Yep, it's Let's go. Trash, I guess. <laughs> Roy dumps all of the garbage on the ground and takes the can. And the garbage man's like, that's not my problem. I take it out of the can into the truck. And just, they just drive off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that pile that, of trash is there. Catch, for the rest catch of you week. next week, buddy. Yeah. That's also like you couldn't have waited till I had dumped it to grab your can back. <laughs> like what the fuck? Yeah, he's like, not my problem. I'm out. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, now he's uh, he just makes this um. <laughs> I put in my notes. This scene is out of control. <laughs> Um, he ba- builds just a gigantic devil's tower uh, in their living room while having a meltdown. 
it just it literally just looks like the pile of crap from the triceratops mm-hmm. in jurassic park yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah jeff goldblum is buried somewhere in the house just like that's that's <laughs> yeah. a big pile of shit and, um and like he's trying to like negotiate with ronnie to try to you know get the family back and then um that doesn't work and he looks on tv and oh the devil's tower and he's like, oh, okay, I'm not crazy. Let's just go to Wyoming. <laughs> yep. And, you know, I think I would have enjoyed this more if maybe we had a little bit of this. Like, maybe if it stopped at the part where he tore the tower, like the top off the tower or something. You know, choice cuts from this. But, like, we've spent more than an hour of the movie, I think, at this point. And this is a two-hour and 15-minute film mm-hmm. Yep. of just watching this guy go nuts. And only now are we going to the actual plot point. Yeah. Yep. I've been chewing on some gristle yeah. for a while. And yeah. You want some resolution to what's going on with his family that now you, you might've cared about if all they did something other than scream and paddle their dad in the ass. Fuck you. Um, nope. Nope. <laughs> no, that's gone. That's done. You're not seeing them again. So yeah, we're going to Wyoming. Um, someone else take the, take the stick. I gotta go turn the lights on. Dun, dun, dun. So like, Fucking, it's it's Wyoming. No one wants to go there. It's, 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 I'm gonna be honest with you. There's like another 30 minutes of just bullshit. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's some there's grass. Uh, see some trees. National parks. <laughs> have have any there. of you actually been to Wyoming? No, no one goes there. No one goes there. I mean, there. I mean, I mean, you were the only one who drove yeah. through it. That's it. I, I like Robin and myself have driven through it, right? And when I did it, I it was about took about nine hours on an overnight driving shift on a night with no moon. So literally all I ever saw of Wyoming was just what the headlight showed me yeah, in the road, was, which was um, mostly just run over animals. <laughs> Some bison. No, no other cars, but a lot of run over animals. I mean, I don't think I could even like separate it from any of the other states that yeah. are adjacent. Sorry, Wyoming, <laughs> but you know. Like this, the next half well, hour, I'll sum it up for you. Drives to Wyoming. Everyone's trying to leave, leave the place. Mm-hmm. He sees the the, the uh, Jillian at some point. They hook up, like they 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 they, they get in his car together and drive some back roads to get around around all the all the the the, the military shit to get closer to this fucking uh, devil's devil's tower. Mm-hmm. That's it. Half yeah. hour. Well, it takes yeah. a while. There's, there's dead there's animals. Some animals. There's military. That appear to be dead. Yeah. Carl Weathers. Yeah. We need they to speak in. They run into a rather lackadaisical military checkpoint that just kind of casually removes them from the vehicle and, uh, you know, takes them to uh, get interrogated by this, uh, the uh, cartographer guy and um, the guy he's translating for uh, Lacombe. And who, like, again, I want to know more about Lacombe. Why is the French guy in charge that's of all a real this? Person. Like, yeah. his character is based off a real person. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Yes. Wow. All right. Who is this person? I want to learn more about point. the cartographer. I want to develop some of these characters. Nah, fuck it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that guy that plays the cartographer is in a lot of the Christopher Guest movies. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, Balaban? Yeah. 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 It's, oh, it yeah. Was funny. He's in a lot of stuff. It was funny to see him with um big, with big hair and beard. <laughs> yeah. So, uh... Looking like McCready. <laughs> it's just weird because you, you look and you're like, okay, they're, they're at the mountain. Like, I've, I've seen this movie before. I know how it ends. So they're at they're at the end of the movie set piece. They're separated from everybody else. Yep. They're they're doing their thing. Still got a half hour. How is there fifty three minutes still left in this movie? <laughs> so, <laughs> For real? They they do a scene which movies and and role playing games are very different things. But this is the part where if I'm running a game, I say you tell this person everything you know about this subject or everything that he needs to know about the subject, and that's it. Like I just skip over that whole scene. You get this scene now where he tell. Where, like, the Frenchman and, the like, Lacombe and the, the cartographer, like, just talk to Roy for a while. Roy's mm-hmm. semi-belligerent. Nothing of importance is said. And they're like, eh, I guess, like, the Lacombe's like, hey, let, you know, the aliens invite these people here. Let's keep them on the base. The, guy, the army guy is like, no, no, no. That's too unorthodox. We can't do that. Get them out of here. <laughs> Um, bluster, bluster. So, yeah, the, the army guy's like, yo, put him on a helicopter, give him gas masks. No one watched that helicopter. No one. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't want a single person looking at it. I don't want the pilots looking behind into the yeah, The cabin. pilots were sitting in it. <laughs> don't close the doors. And give them 
Give them like a good 20 minutes to sit in there before you take off. Like, like it, it, to go back to go back, back to your game example. This yeah. is like you told the players everything you know is already happening, but that one player keeps asking dumbass questions. Yeah, it's <laughs> slipping. <laughs> yeah, it's slipping. It's like the door open still. You're like, yeah, door's open. I'm leaving. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, they fucking get out. You're like, shit. Yeah. I'm fucked up. <laughs> now, uh, <laughs> so, fucking like they just take their gas masks off. Fine, whatever. And they're like, let's just go. No one looking. And then Lacombe sees him, and Lacombe's just like, fuck it. Let him go. I don't care. <laughs> let's see what happens. I don't let, know. Let them fight. Yeah. Oh, man. I well, think one, he's like I the think, garbage man. I'm like that, That's yeah. not part of my job. I think one guy was like, hey, stop. He didn't chase him. He just he gave him the warning, and then, like, that was it. And they just run out of an army base. Yep. Like, full people. You see them run past... Like everyone, everyone, like like a, like a hundred people. Seriously, like the scenes where this movie's like we need a bunch of people doing stuff are like they're they're not lying. There's a bunch of people like doing everything, and yeah. you know, and they're the only people running through this crowd. You think everyone would be watching them? You know, kind of like the neighbors when Roy was freaking out. Yo, nope. s- security here is worse than ever been at the Capitol. Yeah. Well, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Ba-da-ba-da. now. So- so in X Men Two, Nightcrawler could have just walked up in there. Yeah, he yes, just walked in. Hello, I am like, blue. Worked for Wonder Woman, so you know why not? I laugh so I don't cry. Have you so seen it, Tony? You watched it? Oh yeah, I haven't watched it yet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, we were talking about that before. But... After, yeah. <laughs> so military gives this most half-hearted chase. They they get to like the woods, and they're just like, I don't know, they could be anywhere. Just fucking. Gas. Gas. <laughs> oh my god, that was a, a legit option. Yeah. Like, gas like, hole for us. Fuck it. You you understand <laughs> yeah, you guys understand they're not aphids, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> send in the ladybugs. Yeah, like, so fucking um now Roy sculpting it turns out to be to be real useful because he's like, I know a path that gets right to the top, they can't see us, we'll just do that, that, and that, and we'll be up there. And they're like, whoa, we only ever drew one side of it. And he's like, well, I sculpted it, so I know everything. So what, and, what happened? So let me ask you this. They said uh-huh. earlier that the gas knocks you out for six hours and you wake up with yeah. a headache. So mm-hmm. what? They, they, they just left and they're like, just gas it. So what are they, are they going to gas it? And then what? They're just yeah, gonna no one's going to go look for them. Soon. They're just going to wake up and still fuck like, with your play. I actually have notes on this part because I have a question. Uh, Did they kill five birds to, to, to film the birds passing out? <laughs> they cast the birds, maybe. I don't know. It like, what, 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 bird. To, to, to show that to show that, that that the gas is working, they have animals passing out. And they have like these these birds that just throw on the ground and they flop around from it and then stop. Like did they yeah. kill fucking birds for that? So, I didn't read about that, but probably not. I imagine then, that was uh-huh. that was reversed. Because I know I know certain birds, like a chicken, you can literally, if you just hold a chicken and take its wing and put it over its head, so it's like giving itself a headlock, it'll just go to sleep. <laughs> it'll take it a while to like wake up okay. from that configuration. All right. All right, so Joe. if you like, right. if you like knocked some birds out doing some trick like that and then just reverse film them waking up and flying off and just played that backwards, that's probably what they did. Okay. And then the other question is, they, they try to gas people climbing a mountain. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's... What, what is this? Like <laughs> one dude. It's oh, they didn't out. care. It's called they Don't Ask, care. Don't Tell. Yeah. 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 He died, right? Maybe that's why they didn't go looking for him. They just figured. Fuck it. So, this one guy, Murray, who's here for no reason, he was just like, oh, they're running away. I guess I'll run away too. Um, I guess just adds some dramatic tension when he gets gassed, except he gets gassed like he runs out of steam climbing up the first boulder he encounters. <laughs> Which he just lazily slides down, gives himself a bit of a wedgie, and he's like, I can't do it. I can't go on. I mean, <laughs> in, all, in all fairness, if that was any one of us, they ran like a football field. I'd be tired too. Yeah, like, I was going to say, <laughs> I would have I I, been halfway. I would have made it yeah. out the bridge, I mean, yeah, the base. I'm, I'm, I'm I would have ran to the commissary. I would have been like, you know what, guys? I already buckled my seatbelt on this helicopter. Yeah. I. <laughs> No, I'd, yeah. I'd run, but they're not going to do anything too bad to us. Run to the commissary, come back with some snacks. Actually, it's more like... That's about it. 
It'd be more like, hey, that's that mountain I've been drawing all this time. And I'd have to get dressed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this couch is pretty comfortable. You guys go on. I'll meet you. At the yeah. Well, remember when the when Lacombe was like, well, imagine how many never made it this far. Yeah. And cut the five of us just to sleep. <laughs> <in soup>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eating eating cheddar bay biscuits i think he knocked himself out for six hours <laughs> just on the thought of climbing the, yeah. the devil's tower well, rob was all in until he learned that there would be other people there so yeah, no it's just you know it, like a zoom shot where you get see all five of us making the mashed potato thing and then just shoving it in her face yeah so the 43 years since this movie has been made movies have changed quite a bit because they they play this shot of like Roy failing to make it up maybe a 30 degree angle as it's super <laughs> suspenseful. And in real life, like trying to get up that would suck. But like now the shot would be like, he'd be climbing the cliff while a coyote was hanging off of him. <laughs> and like someone on a helicopter was firing like the rocket pods at him. Yeah. His arm would be soaked in blood too. Don't forget yeah. that. Yeah. And he'd be carrying, he'd be carrying the mom from the Christmas story in the other arm. Yeah, and he'd been shot. Well, shot well, she's too. kicking the coyote, like having a like a kung fu battle with the coyote, and they'd all do several flips. Um, well, I'd say this guy's pulling a real Arthur Morgan. Would you agree? <laughs> oh yeah. <So. laughs> all them years, Dutch. <laughs> I got to play it. <laughs> All right. So yeah. we get to the uh, the top of this, uh, not even the top of Devil's Tower, but just to the to the government camp they set up. Mm. And this camp looks interesting. There's a lot of cool things going on. There's a lot of guys doing stuff. And you're like, I would have rather seen like the planning and building of this camp in maybe a montage, maybe a five minute thing. You know, that would have been exciting. That would have been more exciting than them driving through fields for like <laughs> half an hour. A half hour of bullshit. Maybe. Yeah. If we'd at least seen them get their magic clothes from Galadriel, it would have made it a little bit more worthwhile. But uh, no such luck. Like, yeah. Maybe in the director's cut that's not in there, you know? <laughs> yeah. No, all that was was to add a fucking uh, a minute scene in, inside the fucking ship. That's all it was. Yeah. So they set up this whole camp, and you're thinking, you're like, oh, Roy's going to have to do something big here to, like, help with the contact or something, or Barry's going to be super important, and Roy, Barry, and Jillian, when they're all reunited, will like somehow be the bridge that connects the aliens. Nah, right. they just they just nope. watch this go down. Right. Like they refuse like, to show up before yeah. he comes out, or no, yep. no. The, now they're watching this like we're watching this. They're just sitting there. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, what happens here is really cool, and I can't really. Especially for 1977, like, the way these ships look, um, even though they're clearly models, like, it looks cool, it's lit up nice, the, like, the cinema, cinematic gravitas of it is, like, easily rivaling Independence Day, if not better, and, like, it, it's a cool scene of, like, a, of a, con you know, it's like a first contact without, like, the jip of that Jodie Foster movie and all that. Um, it was her so, dad? What? Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Wait, uh, we watched for two hours yeah. for that. And then, so like this scene is cool. And then you see them like playing the tones and have, having like a little like playing Simon. exchange of, yeah, playing Simon with each other. Yeah. The, again, I don't understand why the alien ship chooses to manifest itself as a tuba for the tones it's making. It's fun. But it, you know, why not? They're fun aliens. It yeah. blows out some windows with its they tuba. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, like, so. The little UFOs we've been seeing, including the drunk ass one that's constantly pirouetting about, um, you know, play the tones a bit. They fly off, and this big ass mothership shows up that looks really cool. And um, the mothership flips upside down and like opens a ramp, and like they're like, "Oh, here's all these people we took from you. <laughs> yeah, we're returning them now. You get." <laughs> There bunch of <laughs> here's a bunch of Captain Americas for you. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Maybe we could make a movie where it kind of starts here, and then we learn about these people mm. going crazy because the aliens, you know, maybe the aliens are starting to communicate with us through like like 
taking control of these people, kind of, and sort of and psychologically compelling them. And it's kind of uh, like no. the bionic, the bionic yeah. man, where their buttholes have to get reconstructed after all the years yeah. of <laughs> anal probes. No, nah, it's that's too deep. That's too like deep. that. That's that would make a, an awesome sequel. Like you know, that would, would make an awesome sequel um, potentially. But friggin', like, and you see, there are these volunteers that were like astronauts or something that um, were selected to basically be offered up to the aliens. And again, that's like mentioned for like one scene earlier on. And then you see them now and you're like, oh, I would have, you know, instead of watching Roy and his family scream at each other, I would like to see what you have to do to become one of these. Yeah. What yeah. kind of things they would consider, you know, training these people on. Like, and whole other movie. Yeah. Nope. Also, why was nope, Harley Quinn that. among the ones brought back from the ship? Anybody <laughs> else notice that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. There, there were well, a lot of questions. <laughs> that was literally yeah. like, it, it looked like the, they were letting out Bill and Ted's phone booth. <laughs> like, yeah. just... I mean, I already have the answer to my question. I just, uh, you know, I just yeah, thought I'd bring it. Also, the aliens made uh, made Roy cheat on his wife. So, like, yeah. I have expected when they went on the ship to, fight, you know, be like, oh, there's the alien skull. This is how we're going to get the sequels where they yeah. actually have to fight. Like, that was so unnecessary. <laughs> the kiss? Like, kiss? Yeah. Because, yeah. like, yeah. it was just was unnecessary. Like, it, made, it made no sense whatsoever. <laughs> he was just like, well, like, the government's probably just going to kill us in a few minutes anyway, so, uh, I don't know. That, that might have been Spielberg finally <laughs> saying, yeah, you know what, marriage is probably not for me, I'm going to play the field a bit more. Which, I'm like, <laughs> like, if they wanted to make that a point in the movie, they could have actually set that up some way, versus, like, woman, kiss, <laughs> Uh, right, yeah, you know what right, I mean? Like right. it, it just it was just yeah, because uh, he set him so, up as friends, and like he was actively trying to reconcile with his wife this whole time. Yeah. Yeah. So that might have just been a studio person being like, no, 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 no. they got to kiss. Yeah, that, that's not negotiable. Yeah, maybe. Roy's so wife anyway, definitely told the kids that he died in a car crash in Wyoming, though, right? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> he went to that mountain uh, and died, like everybody said he would. So. <laughs> He got shot by the government. Right. A few observations from the scene that kind of happened in the events I had already described. First mm-hmm. off, Roy just walks in. Just walks yep. in. Yeah. Again, well, now, granted, point, if there are guards, fuck. they're yeah, staring like, at the UFO. Yeah, he's like, well, what yeah. are you going to do? I've Sounds already seen yeah. it so. Yeah, like, you know, maybe there'll be repercussions later. But right now, I'm just walking in. Yeah. Um, he no, is, his only obstacle is he gets accosted by a guy with a serious case of Montezuma's revenge that just runs <laughs> in the dumper. Listen, I've been I mean, there. I'm guessing he's cowering because suddenly he's just like, oh shit, this is real. I don't, right, there's, I, there's a T-Rex go, better hide in the toilet. Gotta hide in one of the dumpers, but like, yeah, he just... He might have literally had the shit scared out of him. Yeah, it's that man right. was just like, <laughs> of all the times to have to take a dump. Well, right the problem is now. that the, the mothership was playing the brown note. That's the... Yeah. Uh... <laughs> and then I like the scene where... It does at one point, too. They all walk towards the oh, UFO right. in the bright light, and everyone is just slowly like, Aviator shades time. Yep. <laughs> all, all the shades come down. And like, I don't know exactly which bad company song I want to be playing in the background as they each slowly put their shades on. Just all of them at the but same time. All, yeah, all of them at the oh, same time. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking my future's so bright, I need to wear shades. But... See, but that would be the 80s. Oh, right, right. All right. I so um, at one point, the right before the doors open, the UFO kind of plays like a proto jaws theme yeah. i noticed that too like, yeah. yeah um it's there's that... a sexual predator in the water <laughs> yeah so the aliens are like well um we were gonna just keep abducting people then we took this kid and uh yeah we were like fuck it just, just give it up give it all back we're leaving <laughs> um so they send barry out and uh you know jill and barry are reunited uh and she's just like okay let's go that's not <laughs> yep. her son yeah <laughs> Um, That's an yeah, alien. He, uh, yeah, he's to replaced by a lizard person. Yeah. yeah. All right. So now Spielberg was smart enough here where he's like, okay, if we don't show the crowd an alien after everything they've been through, <laughs> people are going to be mad. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, I would have been. Uh-huh. Right. Luckily, in 1977, you yeah. don't have to show people very much for it. <laughs> <laughs> well. well... 
My favorite part is when he first shows up. It's like clearly the door wasn't made for him. Yeah, like, he's yeah. just gonna like crouch down to get out of this damn so, thing. So okay, I wasn't sure if I made that up where the alien was like on all fours at first. Yeah. So that, yeah, if the aliens were the sh- crap out of me, crap I'd, people, yeah. I would have been like, cool, cool. And then you know maybe they could stand up on their hips for a little bit, but it clearly looks like, like they bear. don't have like <laughs> bipedal hips. Right. So like you so know, like if Slender they had Man. The, yeah, if they had the Slender Man crawl around you know, yeah. looking alien, I would be like, cool. Could you imagine if they opened the doors and just like 300 xenomorphs poured out of this <laughs> shit? <laughs> that, that would be awesome. amazing. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like one of one of those old pilots, he comes out and he's like, run, and then just xenomorphs. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> His chest oh, bursts man. open. Yeah, there needs to be an edit of that somewhere. Um, so, yeah, this uh, freaking Jack Skellington comes out of this thing. I thought... <laughs> I thought he looked cool. He looked kind of majestic. Yeah, the design was interesting. Every yeah. other alien that pours out of this thing, though. But that's where you got to That's where you got to ask questions and be like, yeah. "Wait, is he like the alien and all of these little guys are because he propagated with all these humans that he took?" Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. These are all little half seas, or is he like some sort of slave master? And all the little aliens are like, and he's gone. Like all the other little aliens are running around. That guy is just—he's nowhere to be found now. You just see him. Minute. He's like, I got kids all over town. Does it help you any to know that these should be orangutans on uh, roller skates? No, because they should be orangutans (laughs) on skates. That would that would kind of be better than what we got here. Just oh, a bunch of be better, but so in one way or another, I acknowledge that in 1977, this probably had a lot more impact. Was and, Warwick Davis one of those people? I don't. I know. mean, they it looks like children in those costumes. Yeah, yeah, they like, are. They were they are, around way more like children. children. Yes. <clears throat> uh, also, here's a weird note because I'm fairly certain the copy we watched is a more modern. Uh, Mm-hmm. updated version which because the alien we see in a moment or two definitely looks i i don't think was from the original cut yeah and the um but the puppet jack skellington one untouched yeah. weird mm-hmm. choice <laughs> so it might be a case of like it's in a higher like definition than what it was intended to be with like the the little kid alien eyes because those eyes are like those are not good like that's not that's not even close to like an, a passable looking eye. Like I think they were hoping that with the light behind them and everything, you never really yeah. got to see much of them. They just look like Halloween masks. Like yeah, gray pajamas and Halloween masks, and then they like just put a spotlight behind them. So, um, you know, the, whatever this, we don't even know what this organization is that's arranged this whole thing that Lacombe is reading. I mean, is leading, but like I they it was just the parade UN, out, wasn't it? Maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, they parade out like here's a bunch of offerings take <laughs> these people to do with what you will yeah and um the aliens check them all over and they're like we'll take your richard dreyfus <laughs> load him on in here because yeah. lacombe was just like right when he saw richard dreyfus he's just like oh okay you want to go go sure like i yeah. took this as like as them saying we picked the ones that we wanted there's yep. only one here now where the fuck are the rest of them yeah <laughs> yeah Oh, um, they're they're all gassed on the sleeves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. like, the the ones we and, wanted, we told and, to be here. Yeah. Where the fuck are they? <laughs> also, well, they, they one of them even... was too fat to climb that wall, so they didn't even bother to give Roy a like a like a overnight bag. Like, <laughs> no, <laughs> like fuck it, you get the red suit. That's it. Not yeah, here's some, towel. Here's some yeah. KY jelly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. That skeleton's um, looking pretty hungry right now. Yeah. <laughs> so they take Roy aboard. An alien walks up to Lacombe. They both do the secret, like, hand signal at each other with, oh, like, the, the five The Heil Hitler? Whatever that was. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, the aliens just go back in their ship and leave. And, like, it, it lifts off. And it, it looks really pretty as it's doing that. It is a very impressive um, series of shots of the ship flying off. And then credits. Yep. Yeah. And there's an R2-D2 on here. What? Uh, there's an R2-D2 on the ship. Is there? Yeah. Little asteroid droid. Hmm. All right. Cool. <laughs> well, that's closing out as the third kind. <laughs> uh, Tony. Yeah. So RottenTomatoes.com. Big surprise. Critics gave the score of 94%. Audience gave the score of 
That's their thoughts and opinions. What about you and yours, Rob? Um, so here's the thing. I was going into this thinking that I was just going to be miserable watching this. I wasn't looking forward to it at all. But I have to say, in standard Spielberg fashion, he held my attention the whole time. I'm not going to say it was great. Uh, it's definitely like one of his weaker Spielberg movies that I've seen. Uh, like, I've not seen AI, I've not seen Sugarfish or whatever that is. Um, <laughs> but, like, among Spielberg's movies that I have seen. I think back when he was making consistent bangers, this would be his weaker film. Yeah, like, it's not it's not terrible. Like, you can tell his, his talent is there through it all. Um, but, like, just the family dynamic and all the, like, the dealing with the craziness that's going on. I feel like this was all done better in Jaws. Uh, so it's not exactly the same, but I think it's similar enough <laughs> where where he's like the father's dealing with these issues that like nobody else really is. He's kind of dealing with on his own. That nobody else is really dealing with like the shark being here, his family being in danger. You know, the 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 cops or not the cops, but the city being against him. Um, I feel like just the whole. Drum, dramatic aspect that was dealt with better in Jaws. Um, and Jaws is just a better movie, in my opinion. But uh, it does it does drag on a little bit. I'm going to say... I'm going to give it a pass. Because, um, I mean, there was nothing egregious about it. It's just too damn long. Okay. Uh, Joe? Um, so, of all, like, the big aliens arrive at Earth kind of movies, this is probably the best one of those I've seen, but those are, to me, those are barely better than vampire movies as far as the quality you usually get. <laughs> Where's um, that compared to dragon movies? Hmm. Uh, still better than dragon movies. I, I don't know if I've seen a good one of those yet. But anyway. um, You're right. I've never seen so, a good dragon. <laughs> this is an example of a movie that I don't think has aged well, but that being said, like, there's there's too many scenes in this movie that are like, that are iconic and, and so well done that even though like the script I I hate, but like the the skill with which it was made and acted and you know delivered is like is pretty flawless. So um it's hard to say that this is a bad movie. That being said, I am trying to cherry pick good points about this. Um in that it does have some moments where it's a little tough to watch. It has weird like you sp spent all that time on this when you could have spent the time on this kind of issues. Um, but like that being said, I like, I still, I have to give it a pass. I did like it. And I did, I appreciated so much that the aliens didn't attack at the end. And <laughs> like, um, I would have liked much more obviously to see like of the science leading up to the alien encounter. I'd like a movie much more like, like contact, but with like interesting things happening. Um, but ultimately like you know we we instead we followed roy and his collapsing family uh so he said good movie i would say it's probably a b but i can totally see how this movie at one point was an a and like a like a total like blow the doors off everyone who saw it okay um agreed but at the same time now thinking about it if mm. this all had just led up to them showing up and then just firing down and destroying everything mm -hmm. like an Independence Day, and then we got credits. I might have been okay with that. <laughs> mm. uh, Will? Um, yeah, so I had not seen this movie before, and similar to an episode, episode we did recent, not recently, but uh, War Games, mm -hmm. um, something that is just so well known in pop culture, like uh, a lot of the beats have been repeated throughout uh, pop culture and parodies and both um, things taking inspiration from this. I was expecting to be bored um, and to not really enjoy it that much, especially seeing the wrong, the long uh, runtime. Mm. But like Rob said, I was, I was um, not like hooked or on the edge of my seat. Like I, like I was for uh, war games or anything like that, but I was definitely interested to see where it went. Um, the Dreyfus stuff was kind of a little weird. And I mean, I think that's been parodied a lot through films since then of like someone getting a vision of something and getting so obsessed with it. And then there's a point in the movie where it finally clicks to what they're, uh, you know, looking at or they realize what they've been drawing or writing is a place they have to go. Um, 
but yeah, I I enjoyed it. I don't think I'll ever watch it again or have the urge to watch it unless you know someone uh, really really wants to watch it for the, for the for the first time. Um, but I'll definitely recommend it if you've not seen it. Uh, you know, a lot of the stuff is late seventies, so it's not gonna it's gonna be a little cheesy, not hold up as well. But you know, Spielberg's always a good time. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna recommend it and probably give it like a, a B minus. Okay. okay. Can I just say two quick things? One, I forgot to touch on. This is an important movie and did, like, like Will kind of pointed out, lay the groundwork for a lot of other movies oh, or yeah. were inspired by what's going on here. So I think that gives it a little bit of extra points in my book. And two, all right, can, I want someone to recut the ending where when the alien shows up, it just real quick cuts to Roy Schneider from um, Jaws going, smile, you son of a bitch. And he <laughs> shoots the gun and then just cut to like the end of Independence Day when the big UFO just explodes. Take that, Slender Man. <laughs> and then just roll the credits. <laughs> All right, uh, Brian. Um, so yeah, so this, this like I said earlier, this is, this is two movies. And one movie is an an uh, A- minus for me. The other movie is about a C for me. So uh, it, overall, it gets about about a C C plus. You know, overall, whatever. Um, and the reason being is just too fucking long. Like like if you took out if you took out the the Roy and his family and, and, and his, his 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 him losing his mind, even though he's not really losing his mind, but he is at the same time. Took that out, you can make an awesome. You know, there are aliens coming. Let's find out what's going on, kind of movie, and that'd be that'd be dope. That's the A for me. Uh, the Roy and his family stuff. It's not that's not a bad part of the movie. But in conjunction with this, it makes it a bad part of the movie, um, and that that's about a, a, a C a C minus, you know, C, you know, for me. Um, but I gotta say, this movie that people should watch, like it's because it's 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 well made, like it's, it is very well made, and a lot, a lot of like there are cool things that happen in the movie, and, it, and there's cool like groundwork set for other other films, whatever. Um, like the, that last Alien is literally Spielberg was like, what would happen if that alien stayed and and stayed, and that's what ET came from. Yeah. So like like this it it sparked some 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 good stuff, but like it's just fucking long. If it wasn't so long, I, I'll give give it a, a higher score. Um. Uh. But yeah, like like it's it's yeah. That that's all that's all I gotta say. I I liked it well, well enough to say go ahead and watch it. I'm not gonna watch it again unless someone pays me to. Um. Because I've seen it enough times now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh. But yeah, like it's it's it is. I see why people like Joe said. I see what why people say this movie is important to watch. But it's just fucking long. <laughs> I think. I, I, or, go ahead. No, no. Oh, I think we're all in agreement. If they tried to make this movie again today, it would be immediately fucked up, and nothing about it would be better. Well, like as as much as better of a visual spectacle as they could make it, they'd fuck it up. Yeah, it I mean, yeah. you know, depending on what they actually try and do, because essentially Arrival is a lot like this, but yeah. Uh, it also really works. Mm. But anyway, um, yeah, I, I'm kind of in the same boat with a lot of people with the, you know, the length is an issue. Uh, that was a bigger thing back then where they could get it. Well, we do that now, I guess. But um, and it is kind of more than one movie crammed together, which if it wasn't Spielberg doing it, I think would have failed miserably. But he does do it pretty well. So it is good. And you also, as uh, stated, the problem of, well, this is one of those founding father situations. People have, you know, that haven't seen this coming into it now are going to recognize like all this stuff that's been overdone in other situations, maybe not realizing this was where it began. Kind of like mm -hmm. with a lot of you guys showing you Halloween, where like a lot of those things were big things at the time, but now they're just staples of yeah. you know, horror movies. And so it just seems even like glamour. Star st return returning to like a new hope episode four, like for people who have not seen that before, mm. it's it's almost not going to be as impactful because literally everything they've seen in pop culture since yeah. that came out has been inspired and mm -hmm. and taken from that. Yeah, but um, but it is the thing. It is a classic, and it is so for a reason. So it, it is really good. I you know would suggest yeah check this out uh if you have any interest because it, it is it's like um I don't know like a uh, Little Women or something where it's like. <laughs> you, you don't you don't ever want to have to come back to it. Uh, you know, you don't need to read it more than once. But understand this was a classic piece of literature for a reason. Like, you know, uh, so, yeah, I'll, I'll say recommend. <laughs> I, I don't know. Well, whatever. You know, some kind of. No, I, I understand. Great we get, we're something. picking up what you're trying yeah. to put. It's down. a classic. Yeah. yeah. A long classic. But it's also a one and done for sure. Like, you don't really need mm. to come back to this on a regular basis. 
if you want to see a a child too large to be in a playpen smash a doll for five minutes, though, <laughs> yeah. I mean, this I... is this is the best for that. Yeah. Also, in general, if you're like trying to convince a partner of yours why you don't want children, <laughs> you yeah. can throw this on. It's like but... this could be us. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, yeah. Ultimately, we're recommending Close Encounters of the Third Kind. What, Lord um, Adjo. Well, I was just gonna say, question for the group. Um, three different kind of ufo styles here which did you prefer so like in this movie where you have it's clearly a model but it's a it's a really intricate model and it's a cool design and it's pretty to look at versus say like independence day where it's a much more like sleek design um of just like it's a big circle much more like the classic but it's you know from a technical standpoint like you believe that that is real more than you believe that this is uh and then something like uh like an overly complicated CGI mess like you get in Battleship. Which ones would you which would you prefer? Oh my gosh, I don't even remember what the ones in Battleship looked like. I never saw, um, saw Battleship. Like a like a pile of Transformers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna say, imagine a Transformer squished into a ball. Yeah. So I I think it all depends on the frame of the movie. Because in this movie, you like the way it was done was perfect for this movie. Yeah. yeah. Like because you see just enough to know what the light, but the the lights blur the edges, mm-hmm. so like you're not you're not focusing too much on the detail of it. You just know this is this is a, this is something awe inspiring and 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 a, and a spaceship. You don't have to worry like that. There's screws in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> um, and so it fit well for, well for this movie. Independence Day for what it was going for. Those fit for what it was going mm-hmm. for. Like it it was it was meant to be like like look at the look at at at, at how uh, the next step from Close Encounters. But like yeah. For that. I never saw, saw Battleship, so I don't know. I mean, I prefer, mm-hmm. I just prefer them where they fit with what the movie's going for. Yeah. Like, I mean, I guess in in Battleship, it looked, it looked like a cash grab. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> well, like also, it fit it, its role. Uh, to clarify, are we talking more the design of the things itself or the techniques used to make them? Well, I'm guessing, I guess I'm saying more of like the, um, like, would you prefer a practical effect that's a little more obvious that it's not actually there? Um, but you know, something that somebody put a lot of care into the design of versus something more like in later movies where it's a CGI object. Um, and it's not, you know, it, it doesn't have the same level of intricacy to it, but it looks more like real. I like when there's, when things do a mix of model work and CGI, Mm -hmm. like, well, Independence Day kind of was that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess, yeah, there were models of those come to think of it. Yeah, I prefer yeah. anything that's physical not a CGI models. mess, really. Mm-hmm. I prefer physical models whenever possible, yeah. um, just because you can tell that they're actually taking up space, and mm-hmm. so they feel more real, even if they don't look as real. Yeah. Um, that's that's about my view on it. I mean, yeah, CG I, is fine. I, I, what I about um... like, I definitely like the models. Like in here, uh, most of the problems come in with the imposing them on the actual film. Which, yeah, if we can use computers to make uh, you know fit that in better, I'm definitely for it. And what about obviously uh... transformer design? I you know I'm not for. <laughs> what about uh, uh train sets? You want you want the actual model train set there, or do you want the CGI one? You know, doing all the crazy stuff. Uh, well, when he's teaching his son about fractions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would prefer the Lego train set. I, 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 I right second answer. Right answer. Right yeah. like, answer. To touch on that fucking fractions, because that bothered me when I first saw it. Because <laughs> I didn't get it. As it should. Now. Yeah. Like, <laughs> instead of saying these three train cars make one whole train, a third of them is one train car. Yeah. <laughs> so saying that, he said, you put the train on the tracks, <laughs> yeah. and this train <laughs> smashes into it. Yeah. Like, what the he just wanted to he's just like, train. you gotta answer, son. Any fucking answer. I don't care. Like, <laughs> it just well, matches it. It made me so mad. Like, well, you, you gotta love that technique of like, all right, you want me to teach you something. So the best way for me to do that is to apply pressure. So you need to solve the problem yourself, which I haven't helped you with at all. But now you need to do it in a time frame or people die. Well, and I love, I love his answer, his first answer. In that it's the answer I would give, but it is not the correct dad answer where he's just like, well, I went to school. I don't have to do this anymore. I did it. <laughs> yeah. I got my merit badge. It's I your problem. Uh, well, guys, we are well on our way to our 200th episode. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> do you, do you, oh, yeah. Do you think it's time we start rolling that D20 and fade again? I mean, it's 2021, yeah. so let's let's uh bring some good mojo. 
2020 yeah. skipped most of 2020, so it hopefully did. it has been it, in quarantine like, for the entirety yeah. of the uh, pandemic. Well, yeah, but uh, weren't we? Uh, well, that's the thing. Else? We do have a sponsored episode, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put it to a vote on air. We can do the episode sponsored next, or we could do it as episode 201. Oh, so episode 200 is next. No, not quite. We're on like 196 or 97, I think. All right. Why don't we let's do the sponsored episode next because someone paid us to do it. But let's roll for what movie we're going to do. All right. Well, after that, Tony. Yes. I don't know who rolled last before we stopped this whole thing for we're starting fresh. You're up. (laughs) Oh, fuck. Uh, get a d20 or go to get your <laughs> d20 simulation website fuck yeah i might have to because that's fine yeah have where is the uh, mystical d20 it's, oh, it's probably at rob's house <laughs> yeah it's in my house well i yeah, that much i figured but, um it's in a drawer and it's sack I'm glad <laughs> he didn't ask me to roll yeah well i'm glad yeah, I'm glad he did this on air so I can take 20 minutes to find something. <laughs> I gotta to, go uh, get my wooden die. Roll dive. here. <laughs> uh, Tony, I thought you had said you had that thing on you all the time. Yeah. That's supposed to T. That's not, that's not his dice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, Fuck that dude up. <laughs> that was amazing. Also, uh, someone in our group uh, has kind of changed us over from D20s to a different style. So, uh, hold on one second. I will be right back. Brian, apparently apparently, you and I didn't get the bathrobe memo for this episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, my, mine's mine's in, in, in the dryer. Oh, okay. I got one. Got one. I'm, under, like Will I'm under a blankie. I don't own a bathrobe. Which, this whole time, Will turned his camera on, but we've been talking to a Jaws poster. Yeah, which <laughs> and I occasionally prefer, Will's personally. curls. <laughs> Because I'm laying down under my blankie. Yeah. Um, how to see that? What if yeah. when that mob charged the Capitol Police? What if they all produced like twisted tees? <laughs> you, you, you know, you know what's funny? If what's you just that? type D twenty roller into your Google, yeah, it just you get, one up. It'll roll. Right, yeah, of course. It's, yeah, I mean, it's a super I simple process. Tony learns. I rolled like ten of them on on my dice app. <laughs> I just rolled a one on my dice app. Uh oh. Oh well, shit! Good thing it's like later. like and, my, my my stats on on my cleric Joe. Yeah, that is and bad. Yeah, that was uh, bad. Rob, uh, it is quarantine time, so uh, the bathrobe is the thing. Yeah. All right. Oh, so, bathrobe and a hoodie. That's oh, that's like geez. armor class. I, I right can't, y'all know I can't turn my heat off. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rob's just wearing like a little pant- man thong. Well, yeah, and I can't <laughs> turn my. Legos are starting to melt. I can't turn my heat on, so bathrobe it is. All right, so I rolled a nine. A nine. All right, great. Did we not do this one already? All right, so number nine is 1988's Child's Play. Oh, nice. Oh, oh wait, we did that. We no, did we, do that. we did. did yeah, we? we did. We did Problem Child. Yeah, we did. Pro- no, we did Child's Play for uh, Halloween, didn't we? Pretty sure no, we did. No, I don't think so. I don't remember it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure for Halloween, that that Fuck. year where we did the first movie and franchises, we did Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, Leprechaun, and Halloween. But I don't think we did Child's Play. Uh, 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 <laughs> Again, thank you for doing this live, Rob. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, I mean, this would happen regardless. I don't know. Uh... Give, give, the, give the listeners a behind-the-scenes look yeah, listen. that we do here. Normally, you'd have to be a patron for this kind of content. Yeah. <laughs> and regret spending yeah. your money. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Are you looking through the archives? <laughs> yes, I am. Oh. The uh, archives, which only go up to episode 142. Okay. Uh... I'll fix those eventually. <laughs> I don't really care that much. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> <All right>. it. <laughs> Again, just, just like yeah. Lacombe watching them run out of the army base. Fuck oh, it. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay, I guess I I just thought we had, but maybe we hadn't. Okay. No, that's like when I I, I thought I thought that we we had done a movie and we didn't like same thing like. Oh yeah. <laughs> I could have sworn we had whatever whatever it was I was saying. All right. Child's play it is. All right. That's a great way to start off the new year. Yeah, I agree. A little Brad Dwarf running around. But, uh, you know, that's going to be not for another couple of weeks. In the meantime, next week, 
or not next week, next episode, my goodness, uh, we are going to have our sponsored episode, Virtuosity. Oh, boy. I've never seen that. Oh, Where have oh, I? Oh, oh, I, uh, I've, I have I know, seen it, but I don't remember anything about it. I know other that, bad movie podcasts have done it, but I've not seen it. I, all I know about it is that's one of those movies they made about the internet before they knew what the internet was. <laughs> yep. <sighs> cool. Well, it's a good time. well, all that's going to do for this episode. We want to thank you so very much for listening. We really do appreciate it. If you want to hear more, you can find our episode archives at www.4ampodcast.podbean.com. You can find out there if we did Child's Play already or not. Uh, you can, of course, support us by picking up some merchandise at teespring.com slash 4 podcast. We do sell hoodies, not bathrobes, but you can buy a 4 a.m. podcast hoodie to wear under your bathrobe. You can, of <laughs> course, help support us and get access to patrons-only content at www.patreon.com slash 4 podcast. You can, of course, email us at the 4 podcast at gmail.com. Or you can follow us on Twitter or Facebook if you still can possibly stand those two applications. Might be uh, doing some uh, Transformers Patreon coming up soon. That is correct. They just did uh, Earthrise, so we got to get on that. All right. Is that a new new series? Yes. Mm-hmm. Season I'm two. Gonna, I'm gonna put some uh, like a bonus contest out there for our fans. Okay. Oh. Send us your picture of your best mashed potato sculpture. Bonus points if someone is crying in the picture. Ooh. And the prize, if you win, is a mountain of mashed potatoes that you made and sculpted yourself. That's true. I <laughs> just the eat the mashed potatoes. Along the way. A sense of yeah. accomplishment. Yeah. And Disappointment. Dehydration. <laughs> yes. let's, let's, let's see those pictures, though. I want, I want to see some mashed potato creativity. It doesn't have to be Devil's Tower. Whatever you want to make. Yeah. Just as long as it makes someone sad. And... Preferably multiple people. Yeah, I will add. Me a dick. Like, <laughs> oh yeah. Like, and someone add... crying. Someone's looking at it. If you can show us that you have, in fact, then eaten those mashed potatoes, we will officially make you a member of the Fat Chat. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's wow. Fat Chat. Like as long as it, it's got to be at least a family of four serving. Like right. one of those things that allegedly feeds a family of four, but really the little, little tubs. Yeah, one person. Well, please send those photos in to the 4 podcast at gmail.com or, of course, just uh, tweet them at us at 4 podcast. We can't wait. Do it. Tweet them. It's quarantine. Make make mashed potatoes. Hell Get yeah. your Instant Pot yeah, out. Yeah, what else you doing? Yeah. All right, guys. Yeah. Thanks so much for listening. We'll see you next time for Virtuosity. Bye. Deuces. Adios. Good night, everybody. I have spoken. Mm-hmm.